All right, guys, so just out of the field, wanted to do a pocket dump, and this is going to be the items that are most commonly found in soldiers' pockets and things that we routinely go back to for survival, field craft, bushcraft, and things out in the field. Now, that first item is going to be a Gerber multi-tool. The Gerber 600 basic model is a standard issue multi-tool issued to soldiers when they come into service and they arrive to their first unit and draw their equipment from the central issue facility, CIF, and go out to the field. The Gerber 600 is the basic model. This is actually the diesel model. The only difference between the basic and the diesel is that the diesel has a saw, it has scissors, and it does not have replaceable wire cutter metal tips up near the pliers as the basic model does. But anytime we go to the field, we need to have just that multi-tool with us, something with a blade, a saw, scissors, even a file, and then a way to actually all a ream into equipment and the can opener does that best with this model. There are a lot of things we can do with a simple multi-tool to affect field craft and survival skills out in the field. Obviously processing material but then there are some specialty things we can do with this tool. One thing we can do with this multi-tool is use the file as part of the tool as a flint and steel kit with a hard rock. Now this isn't going to give us a great amount of sparks compared to a piece of high carbon steel but it will still give us sparks if we strike that file hard enough and we can use it as a flint and steel fire kit with char material to ignite that char and then blow it into flame. One of my favorite tricks is magnetizing a needle as an improvised compass or cardinal direction finder. We can do that with this knife similarly to other knives and get it magnetized for direction finding. A multi-tool is a great piece of kit to have, especially for field craft and survival. That next tool or that next item in our pocket is also going to be a cutting device and it is just a simple folding knife or a folder with that pocket clip so we can just put it right in the front side pocket, get it out, open it, cut what we need to, most likely into an MRE, close it, and then put it back in our pocket. A folding knife with a straight blade, no serrations, is perfect, especially for field craft, because we can actually carve with this better than we can a serrated blade. And the back actually has a 90 degree spine, so we can take that with our ferro rod, drive sparks off it if we have to, to ignite our tinder and get our survival fire going in the field. For a combustion device, most soldiers are going to have a lighter in their pocket. That lighter we use to light up cigarettes because a lot of soldiers still smoke, or we just have it for field craft and for survival training, or especially for school training like ranger school. This is just a ranger lighter, what we call a ranger lighter, because we can take the smaller items, tape those items together like chapstick and a lighter with a little bit of paracord to keep them together. That tape that's wrapped around there, the 100 mile an hour tape, we can rip off a hunk of that roll it up, light it with a lighter, and now we have an extender for our flame as well as a tinder source to get our fire going in the field. Underneath that cap of that chapstick, we can also place a little bit of cotton, infuse it with the petrolatum from the chapstick or lip balm, making it a flame extender as well and a tinder source. And if we don't have that, we can grab some cotton from our old field dressing, grab a little bit of that chapstick, roll it out, put it into that cotton, and just gush it together and we have our ready-made tinder source with the flame extender from the petrol lab, and we light that and we can compare that with infused cotton and just a regular cotton that doesn't have a flame extender or any petroleum jelly in it and compare which one burns faster and which one is going to last a little bit longer. So it always behooves us to have that chapstick as part of our kit even in a small minimal kit like this to go in our pocket for field craft one thing you can never have too much of out in the field is going to be paracord. Parachute cord is the cordage for survival, bushcraft, field craft, camp craft. It does everything for us. We can use it to put up our shelter or our hooch, hang up dry clothing, stick down our shelter, or use it with a primitive friction fire set like a bow drill. And we can also go out in the field, get a little creative, and dig out the survival manual and build survival small game weapons to practice our hunting skills on targets while we're out there in the field waiting on jump manifest or while we're waiting to go up to the range and shoot. Some of the simple things we can make are olas made out of paracord, 100 mile an hour tape, and half inch washers, just a simple small game throwing device. And we can also make a projectile launching device like a shepherd sling out of paracord as long as we understand basic weaving, knot tying, and lashing. Good to go. One set of items that is too important not to have anytime we go to the field, especially for military personnel, 
is just a notebook and some sort of writing stick. With these two items, we can recreate a map, we can jot down notes, we can create a report and issue that report to other people for supplies. We can even, in fact, draw a compass and create what's called a solar compass with the back of our notebook and some paper, drawing a large circle, a smaller circle, and recreating that compass face to give us an actual compass we can use with the sun. The thing that does us more good than harm is carrying a pack of gum, a great conversation starter, and buddy morale boost, as well as something to chew on in the field. A candling device is going to be incredibly important, especially seeing in the dark, checking your map underneath that poncho and poncho liner on patrol. And so carrying a flashlight is going to be crucial for not only military personnel, but for people out in the field who want to see in the dark, obviously. This mini mag light used to be a common item on a lot of school packing lists, along with a headlamp. A headlamp is obviously going to be a little bit more utilitarian, friendly to use, easy to use out in the field. It frees up your hands. But having a small mag light like this is great for being able to see in the dark. And then we can even add tape around the handle along with a small paracord lanyard so we can just put it over our wrist and continue moving, put it down and let it drop if we don't need it and then quickly pick it back up while we move around in the dark. Hey, remember that gum we have as part of our kit? Well, not only is it a good conversation starter or something to chew on when you're in the patrol base at night, but we can also use it as a survival item with our flashlight. We just want to take out a stick of gum, chew on the gum, keep the wrapper. We're going to use the scissors from our multi-tool to cut the wrapper lengthwise into long strips. We fold that strip in half, find the fold, and then cut from one corner of the bottom of the fold to the opposite corner diagonally, leaving just a little bit of that wrapper joining the two triangle portions that we have right there, completing what length of wrapper we have left. Then we can just take out the batteries from our flashlight, use one AA battery. We're gonna take that wrapper, touch one end to the positive end of that battery, the other end to the negative portion of that battery. Once we complete the circuit, that small portion we cut will heat up and burst into flame and we have fire. So it's always a good decision, a good field craft skill to have two different flashlights, a headlamp and then just a handheld flashlight with AA batteries and a pack of gum for fire starting in the field. That next item is going to be a military cravat. It's a triangle shaped piece of dressing, 100% cotton, large cloth that we can use for a variety of purposes. It has multiple uses, and if you want to see 10 of those uses, click the link up top right now on 10 different ways we can use a military cravat for survival and bushcraft. I once had a ranger instructor tell me, always keep a knife, a way to start fire, and a snack in your pocket because we survive out of our pockets, and that is so true. And so we can take the bits from MREs, put them in our pocket as a quick snack like this MRE peanut butter, high in fat, calories with trace protein, good to go. The last thing we're typically going to have in our pockets as part of field and even deployment kit is going to be a cat tourniquet. Typically two, one somewhere in the pants, the other one up top in our clothing. That way we can access both from anywhere and apply it to save our own lives or our buddy's life. All right, guys, this is a very down and dirty video. Just doing my pocket dump really quick to show you the items that are typically carried, either issued or bought over the counter, that every soldier is going to have, especially combat arms, out in the field. I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.